Greetings, housemates, and welcome to <laughs> Let's Mod Skyrim. I've been wanting to play a well-modded Skyrim. I think playing the Long Dark has really got me in the mood for a survival, a realism-based fantasy world. <laughs> and um, I'm going to go through the Reddit Beginner's Guide to Modding Skyrim, uh, the long version. Uh, it starts with create a Nexus account for nexusmods.com and ends after installing all of the basic uh, Skyrim utilities. So it's not going to be a particularly tight installation video. I'm just going to do it as I install these. So um, I'll probably edit the video a little bit afterwards, but this will probably turn out to be quite long and extensive, and we're going to go through all of it. Create a Nexus account is step numero uno. I already have a Nexus account. This is at nexusmods.com. Um, the primary source, you can, of course, download through the um, Steam Workshop, but one of the mods that I really, really want to install, Frostfall, um, is no longer available on Steam Workshop due to some um, community drama and uh, paid content disputes. So um, we're just going to do it sans uh, Steam's convenient workshop because it seems like if I want to install anything, then I should do it the standard old school way. So I have a Nexus account and I am logged in. File organization. Uh, let's see. So it says in Windows, you should not install Skyrim in the programs files directory. Uh, that is not a problem for me, as um, I actually have I, Steam installs on my D drive, and my C drive is a solid state that has Windows installed on it. So it's separate from my installation of Windows. It's under Games. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's totally under Games, right? Uh, yeah, anyway, it's around here somewhere. Um, hmm, where is it? If you don't know where it's installed and it's already installed, then you can go to Properties for Skyrim, Local Files, Browse Local Files. Okay, D, Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Skyrim. Of course it is. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. Um, I also suggest before you do anything, you verify the integrity of the game cache. I already did that. Um, it takes a while, so I'm not going to do it again. And you run Skyrim to the menu once. Uh, this lets all of the files settle in to their proper configuration. This is before you do anything. Uh-huh. All right, once you get here, your gravy, just leave. And I've made a space for Skyrim utilities. This is suggested in the steps. Um, you create somewhere you can put install the Skyrim utilities in, you can find it later. I also made a shortcut to Skyrim utilities here on my under my favorites so I can get back to it easily. Um, so that's what it wants you to do here. It says avoid installing it where Windows, because Windows under program files will protect things from looking at those files and it can cause problems later. Mod Organizer is the first thing that it wants you to download and install. Here I'm already at Mod Organizer by Tannen. It is a Skyrim utilities download from Nexus Mods. And I have downloaded Mod Organizer version 1.3.11. But I'll go ahead and download it again. Here it is. It's a 23.5 megabyte download. And... We'll just go ahead and cancel that. Because I have it right here. It's a nice easy run. You just click everything. I tell it to handle Nexus links. 
and start menu shortcut so that once you download from the Nexus, things will um, be handled by the mod organizer. It talks about this. Let's see. Run the installer and point it to your main Skyrim directory. So we're running it, browse. Okay, so it wants us to, we'll put a copy of this in utilities. Okay, run the installer, point to your main Skyrim directories, which is D. Steam. Steam ads, common, Skyrim. Install. I guess we'll go ahead and run it. Uh, here it says create a shortcut. You can pin it to your taskbar to run it. Um, and you'll be running everything else, all the other utilities you download through it. Whenever it pops up. Do you want to show a tutorial of its basic features? Sure. Welcome to the Mod Organizer tutorial. This will guide you through the most common features of MO. Please go along with the tutorial because some things can't be demonstrated if you skip something. Before we continue with the step-by-step -step tutorial, I'd like to tell you about the other ways you can receive help on Mod Organizer. The highlighted button provides hints on solving problems MO recognized automatically. This button provides multiple sources of information and further tutorials. Finally, there are tool tips on almost every part of Mod Organizer. If there is a control MO you don't understand, please try hovering over it to get a short description or use help on UI from the help menu to get a longer explanation. This list it displays all mods installed through MO. It also displays installed DLCs and some mods installed outside MO, but you have limited control over those in MO. Oh, over those in MO. Before we start installing mods, let's have a quick look at the settings. You can use your regular browser to download from Nexus. Please open the Nexus tab. Click this button so that download with manager buttons are downloaded with the mod manager. You can also store your Nexus credentials here for automatic login. The password is stored unencrypted on your disk. Have I clicked it enough? Okay. Now it's time to install a few mods. Please go along with this because we need a few mods installed to demonstrate other features. There are a few ways to get mods into the mod organizer. If you associate MO with NXM links in the settings, you can now use your regular browser to send downloads from Nexus to mod organizer. Click on Nexus to open the Nexus, find a mod, and click the green download buttons on Nexus saying download with manager. All right, well, what is next? Let's go with one of the mods I'm really looking forward to. Um, 
Or should we go with a small one? Let's choose a kind of smaller one. I want I want violins. This is a kill move mod. Uh, let's check back. Download with manager. Now, it says always download from the files branch. Because when you come here, you may see all sorts of optional files that you might actually want, like Russian or Italian language. Um, and then download with manager. We click this button. That's fine. We'll get around to that. Let's hope I got that right. Now, did it work? I have to download and install at least one mod to proceed. Okay, so we found it here. I assume legendary means everything. I do have all of the DLC. And I'm not using Requiem. I don't know what the difference between loose and BSA is. We'll just leave it on loose. And we'll leave it vanilla since we're just installing it. Okay, now we know all about downloading and installing them, but they're not enabled. So we can enable them like this. In the plugins tab. A single mod may contain zero, one, or multiple ESPs. Some or all may be optional. If in doubt, please consult the documentation of the individual mod. To do so, right-click the mod and select Information. This dialog tries to expose as much information about a mod as possible. Depending on the mod, this may include readmes, screenshots, optional plugins, and so on. If a certain type of information was not found in a mod, the corresponding tab is grayed out. If you install the mod from Nexus, the corresponding tab should give you direct access to the mod page. That would be this. Takes you back to the Nexus. We may revisit the screen in later tutorials. Okay, there's one ESP. Interesting. Okay, so you can download the description directly to here. Cool. Another special type of files are BSAs. 
These are bundles of game resources. Please open the archives tab. These archives can be a real headache because the way BSAs interact with non-bundled resources is complicated. The game can even crash if required archives are not loaded or ordered incorrectly. MO applies some magic to make all BSAs that are checked in this list load in the correct order, interleaved with the non-bundled resources. You can disable this magic to make MO behave more like other tools. In this case, their load order follows that of the corresponding plugin. Now, I believe from the beginner's guide that this particular feature is something that will save you a boatload of time um, and is pretty awesome. But you're going to want to read everything and proceed slowly through this, this whole process. Um, and going through the tutorial is key to understanding exactly what the Skyrim Mod Organizer can do for you and why it's probably superior to the other tools. According to this Reddit guide, which I find to be incredibly well worded, so I trust it. Plus, Redditors are totally brutal if you step out of line, so. Uh huh. Many BSAs will appear grayed out and enabled. These mods are loaded by the game engine automatically, so they can't be disabled here. Now you know how to download, install, and enable mods. It's important you always start the game from inside Mod Organizer, otherwise, the mods you installed here won't work. So you're going to be running it from here every time. But that's what lets you know that you're a badass modder. The fact that you're, you're not running it from your start menu. This combo box lets you choose what to start. Um, this way you can start the game, launcher, script extender, the creation kit, or other tools. If you miss a tool, you can also configure this list, but that is an advanced topic. This completes the basic tutorial. As homework, go play a bit. After you have installed more mods, you may want to read the tutorial on conflict resolution. All right, whew, we survived the mod organizer tutorial. Um, like it says, we're going to run everything through mod organizer. And the very next tool we're going to get is the Load Order Optimization Tool, or Loot. Um, loot dynamically reads each mod's list of masters and makes decisions about your load order based on the master lists. This will save you massive amounts of time over trying to manually adjust your entire load order by hand, which is a total pain in the butt. I did it um, a couple years ago, and it was not fun at all. Um, loot is the successor to Boss, which you may have heard of. Um, basically, Loot is new to me, and Boss was what I used previously. Um, loot just does it a little bit more dynamically, whereas Boss had some sort of master list that was constantly being updated by hand, and which is no longer being updated because the people who made Boss switched to Loot. Um, thus, Loot is probably the way to go for the future, even if right now boss um, and loot have each have their advantages it seems like loot is just going to scale better into the future all right we'll scale down we'll skip down to installation and using loot loot download download loot from github github is a trusted site so i have to sign up or can i just download it there we are. Loot. I'll just go with the loot installer. <coughs> All right. Skyrim utilities. Let's throw MO in there. Let's make a loot. Remember, this is just a storage spot for our beloved no where am I? Um, tools. The Skyrim Utilities folder, they said, should be made on the same uh, drive or partition as Skyrim is installed. But otherwise, that's all. OK. Download the archive in a loot folder, extract the contents.
I think I want to install to this folder I'm currently looking at. I'm not going to create a desktop icon because, of course, I'm going to be running it from MO. Let me grab this just in case I need it. Okay, how do... Okay, be sure to add loot to your list of executables MO following the instructions above. Open the drop down menu next to the big run button. Select edit. Yeah, yeah, I guessed as much. In the title dialog, add the name of the program. Loot. The next box down is the binary path. Binary path. Click the Browse button and navigate to the .exe for the desired program located where you installed it. All right, so we grab that D game Skyrim Utilities loot. Ah. We want this .exe. Remember, that's our installer. Once you've selected the .exe, uncheck Close MO on Startup. It is unchecked. And select add. OK. There we go. We can start loot from here now. All right. That's what I get for skipping around. OK. Once you have the mods you want and you're sure you do, 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 do. And you're sure you've got the necessary compatibility patches, run loot from the MO launcher menu. So we'll be running loot later. Um, pretty much after every time after we install a mod. And it will do good things for us. One of the mods, I know if you read the descriptions, it'll be like, loot doesn't properly organize this. You have to do it manually. You just have to read the descriptions of every mod very carefully and check out the compatibility sections. It's a Skyrim is a fickle mistress but worth it. All right, Skyrim Script Extender, SKSE. Um, SKSE does exactly what it sounds like. It expands Skyrim's scripting language, allowing for more robust mods. It also incorporates the startup memory allocation patch, the single most important patch for a stable Skyrim modding experience. Both of these will be outlined below. Um, this is required by like everything. Uh, so click on that handy link. I got two of these. Well, they seem to be the same place. <laughs> Do not use anything from the Windows App Store. Uh, we're just going to grab the latest installer, 10703, or 1.7.3. Okay, let's go back to our utilities, SKSE. Put this in here. All 
No, it's probably, is it running? Uh, weird. Let's copy it then. All right, it wants my Skyrim installation directory, but it guessed exactly where it was already. We'll skip the desktop shortcut because once again, we'll be running it through MO. All right. Steam, Steam apps common Skyrim. Let's make a shortcut here so I can get there whenever I want. Now, where is SKSE loader? That is the file we want to once again add here. We have a title. We'll use our handy shortcut. unchecked okay note that we will be using skse to launch skyrim from now on we're not running skyrim through steam we're not running it through the executable in the folder only through skse through the mod organizer so when we run skyrim it's gonna look like this boom because SKSE is so good. All right, now we have to activate the memory patch included with SKSE. Do, 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 in Skyrim data, let's go ahead and get there. Let me turn that off. No, okay. Data. Create a new folder and name it SKSE. Right click, create new text document. SKSE dot INI. Hmm. Yeah, what you don't want is it to be skse.ini.txt. Uh, since I can't remember how to change that, let's go here. In this tutorial, we will guide you on how to show file extensions in Windows 7 using different methods. First of all, go to the Start menu, open up the Control Panel, and click on the Folder Options to open it. Once done, move over to the View tab. Deselect the Hide Extensions for Known File Types option and click on the OK button to save these settings and exit. Now you can see the file extension of every file will be displayed along with its name. Alternatively, you can open up the Start menu, type in Folder Options in the search box, and click on its icon from the menu to open up the Folder Options panel. You can also open Windows Explorer from the Start menu, press the Alt key on the keyboard to display the File menu, move over to Tools, and click on the Folder Options from the list to open it. All right, easy enough. Folder options. View, uncheck hide extensions for known file types. Click apply. Go back here. And now when we edit the name, we can get rid of the unwanted.txt. Okay, that exists. Thank you, thoroughness of the Reddit people. 
All right, open the new skse.ini and add these into it. Okay, so we'll just copy all that. Save, close, double check, good. All right, we've saved it, done. We ha now have the memory patch. Okay, EN boost. Warning, EN boost does not work on all systems. There are a lot of issues that can cause EN boost not to work. Please don't ask me what the problem is if your game won't launch with EN boost installed. I'm happy to troubleshoot anything else in this guide with you, but for EN boost, please either make a post or head over to the enbdev.com forums. Thanks. All right, guys, you heard it here. I can't help you if he can't help you, that's for sure. Um, overview. ENB series is a post-processing and shader effects overlay template. He's not going into details of what that means, but it is good for the game engine. And even if you're not going to install other things that rely on EN Boost, just the basic upgrade is really good for your engine. Um, because Skyrim, by default, does a pretty bad job of virtual RAM management um, with textures, lighting, and all sorts of other stuff. So this is recommended not required if it doesn't seem to work for you skip it um, but i'm gonna go for it because i believe i installed it here once before um let's see okay so we're gonna open that up oh too many of these rolling around here we are he wants us to make a folder in B manager. Okay, create a new folder inside in B manager, name it versions. Create a new folder inside versions and name it XXX. Yeah, okay. We click this link to see where that goes. Oh yes, I remember this. Okay, which one do we want? Okay, well, let's go back. Suspicious. Mm -mm. Click the latest version to enter the download page for that version. Oh, I see. All right, we'll take 305. We'll make a new folder, like suggested. There's a little download link all the way at the bottom. Man, I remember doing this for the first time. Come on. All right, so we're going to grab that. Nope. Put EMB series there. And we're going to return. OK, downloaded. Once downloaded, right click the EMB series archives and select extract here. Extract all. Well, 
open the wrapper version folder and select only these files. In behost.exe, uh huh. Not present. Local and D three nine. There's D three nine. Uh, there's host, there's local. Okay, copy and paste these three files into your main Skyrim directory. Okay, good thing we have that thing on hotkey. There they go, d3d9.dll, enbhost.exe, and enblocal.ini, these three. Open the envlocal.ini and edit the values according to this page. Let's edit with Notepad++. Nope. Nope. Let me get this XCOM stuff out of the way. All right. Here we are. I don't have Windows 10. Um, I've been avoiding downloading it for quite a while now because it screws up my recordings, or at least it did. Let's see. The first set of outline parameters applies to everyone. The last parameter in the memory section is a bit different depending on your operating system. Be sure to follow the correct set of instructions. Open your local ENB local.ini and change your values according to the values outlined below. Do not just copy and paste what's here as it is, as the Reddit formatting might break it and some of the values need to be set up specifically for your system. <sighs> okay. So here's global. Use patch speed hack without graphics equals true. All right. Use deferred rendering should be false. Expand system memory time 64 blank. You may set, or okay, what I mean is you may set this to either true or false and it will work. But you must also have reduced system memory usage equals true and enable unsafe memory hacks equals false if it is set to true. If you have a 64-bit operating system, setting it to true is recommended. Uh, you can totally check that um, under control panel. Is it computer status? No. under system and security system system type 64 bit operating system that's control panel system and security system and it's right down here on system type 64 bit is what i have so i want this to be set to true but remember it says it could be true or false and if it is set to true, we need reduced system memory usage also equal to true. Reduced system memory usage is true. And we need enable unsafe memory hacks equal to false, <laughs> which sounds great. Enable unsafe memory hacks is false. All right, that takes care of that one. Reduce system memory usage, we just covered that one. Disable driver memory manager. Disable driver memory manager. It's false, that uh, is already like that. Enable compression. If you have a lower end system, setting this to false may improve performance. Worth trying both ways to see if there's a difference. Enable compression, false. Yeah, okay. Uh, my, my system is badass, except for my graphics card, which is not so badass. So I'm just gonna leave this at false. Reserved memory size megabytes. This may be set to 64, 
128, 256, or 512. Start at 64 and work your way up until you can play without experiencing stutter in game. Most 64-bit users will use 128. If you don't get stuttering at 64, all the better. Uh huh. Well, I'm. Am I gonna remember that? I'm gonna set it to 128 just to be safe right now. Also, remember to save your changes. Video memory size megabytes. That's here. Here's where it splits up depending on operating system. Following the follow the correct set of instructions below. Windows 10, 8, 8.1. This is Windows. I actually totally forgot what, what version of Windows this is. It's not 8. I think it's 7. All right. System... Windows 7 Professional. All right. If I'm running a 64-bit version of Windows 7, which I am, I have to use multiples of 1,024. According to virtual RAM plus RAM minus 2,048. Let's say you have 8 gigabytes of RAM. Uh huh. All right, so we have to do some digging. Computer system properties. Ah, here we are again, same place. Let's just leave this open. Okay, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Let's get out the calculator too. Or push that handy keyboard button we never get to use. 16 times 1024. So we have this many megabytes of RAM. And let's see how many gigabytes of virtual RAM I have. Control panel, adjust resolution, advanced. Control panel. Uh, adjust resolution. Advanced. Okay, my NVIDIA GeForce GTX 460. Shut up, guys. Um... Let's see. It says I have dedicated video memory, one gig. I know, I know. Let's make sure that is the correct one. Okay, uh huh. Yep, dedicated video memory, one gig. So virtual RAM plus regular RAM. Okay, minus 2048, sure. So we'll just go through the system. So we have 1024 from the graphics card, and then it says minus two gigs. Leaves us with 15,360. Now, the amount caps at 10,240, so 10 gigs. If your number is much higher than that, simply put in 10,240, which I will be doing. Okay, um, and that all goes into video memory size. 10, 240, come back here. All right, well, that's five times what it had in there before. So I assume that's good. Finally, you may also want to set these to true. Window force borderless false. Uh, force borderless full screen false. I do want both of those to be true. This will smooth out alt tabbing for some people, but a small performance loss. Um, I believe it is definitely worth it. Um, running borderless is 
just quite pleasant, especially uh, we'll see when it comes to recording, but. This has always been good for me in the past. Okay. Okay. Here we are. All right, so that was open the ENB local.ini and edit the values according to that page. Yay. Um, now, Rye Bash. Rye Bash is, at its core, another mod manager like MO, our mod organizer. Um, we're not going to use it for that. It has a specific option that nothing else actually <laughs> does. Um, that is, it creates the bashed patch. Um, for the way it works, basically when mods add things into the list of items that you can receive or enemies that can spawn in a place, basically all the randomization of in-game objects um, that Skyrim does, um, when mods add things into these lists, they can get mixed up, and the Rye Bash sorts everything more intelligently than the mods can when being installed. And it makes sure that you don't run into level 5 bandits with full Daedric plate and stuff like that. Uh, so, uh, that is pretty much what it's for when you're using Mod Organizer. Um, get in the habit of downloading from the files. Let's go to downloads. Okay, I've already got copies of these tucked away, so I'm going to clean them out. Oh, I think that might be running in the background. Okay, downloaded. All right, run the installer and point it to your Skyrim game folder. D, Steam Apps, Common Skyrim, all right, it found it. Make sure the boxes for install for Skyrim and standalone are checked. Doing this will create a folder titled Mopey in the Skyrim directory. This is the Rybash folder in home to rybash.exe. There will be no start menuing. Thanks. Until I delete any older files. Here is Mopey. There's the exe. Let's copy this path so that when we add the .exe to the MO launcher menu. And don't ask me why it's called Rye Bash. Did we get it? Oh, I didn't like that. It's like you're kidding me, right? That's because that was just wrong. Improper use of fields, 15 yard penalty. Or 15 seconds, I suppose. All right, so Rybash is in there. Let me double check we were not supposed to. Yeah, the ENB one does not get connected in this way to MO. Disable that before I forget. Okay. Using Rybash. Launch Rybash from MO. MO is locked while the executable is running. Okay, so MO is just going to sit in the background and not be active. At the bottom of your load order, you will see a bashed patch, comma, zero, dot ESP. Right click it and select rebuild patch from the menu. Here it is. Right click, 
Rebuild patch. Only enable leveled lists, no tweak settings, no import names, just leveled lists. If it prompts you to select patches to merge with the pop-up select skip, do not deactivate the patches as it tells you to. Just skip. If it didn't prompt you, but you see merge patches enabled in the rebuild patch window, disable that now. Merge patches are better done in TES 5 edit. That is the Elder Scroll 5 edit which is Skyrim. Select build patch. Here it is. Boom. Right, Bash will now produce a small log indicating the changes it made to leveled lists and your mods. Let's activate it. I assume that's what I'm supposed to do. Upon exiting Rybash, you'll find the newly created Bashed Patch 0.esp in your plugins window and a Bashed Patch 0 mod in your mod list. Well, let's exit and see if that's true. Here is Bashed Patch in my plugins, as it was foretold, and a Bashed Patch 0 mod in your mod list. Hmm, and that one I don't see, unless I'm doing this wrong. Uh, oh, I see. I believe that this is it. If you do not see the bash patch in your mod list, which I think it should be over here, check the overwrite folder at the bottom of the mod list. Overwrite folder. At the bottom of the mod list. Oh, it's this. Inside, you will find the bashed patch in a docs folder. Okay. Close the overwrite folder, right click it, select create mod, name it bashed patch. Okay. Place both of these at the bottom of their respective lists. Always, always at the bottom. Until you start using Skyproc patchers, which you aren't right now, so always at the bottom. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. There's some little errors popped up in here. I assume that's not a problem. It did not show up in my plugins menu. That is. There it is. It just wasn't activated for some reason when I stopped it. I think that should make it happier. Okay. TS5 Edit. This is one of the most powerful modding tools that the community has to offer, allowing one to really open up a mod and dig into the inner mechanics. For now, we'll just be using it for two things, and that is cleaning dirty edits from the master files and creating a merged patch 
for a fully in-depth overview, you can read the training manual somewhere else. All right, so we're cleaning things up. <clears throat> Basically, these are problems left in the vanilla game by the um, people who made it. So then we go searching here. Okay, DS5 edit. Seven zip extract here, I assume. All right, manually download the archive into the uh -huh. extract contents, add the .exe to the MO launcher menu. Sure. And we'll make this lowercase so we don't get confused. I'm gonna copy this to make everything easier. go okay clean your masters <laughs> navigate to steam steam x skyrim mod organizer slash mods okay skyrim mod organizer mods Right-click anywhere and select New and make a new folder. Name it TS5 Backups. Launch Mod Organizer and then launch TS5 Edit through Mod Organizer. All right. Select only update.esm and let it load. This is really important. Only clean one file at a time. Trying to clean all your masters at once can cause this program, TS5 Edit, to short circuit and break something. So, update.esm. All right, it says finished. Right click update.esm and select apply filter for cleaning. You can also see it counting up here. Right click update.esm and select remove identical to master records. Yes, you are sure what you are doing. Remove identical to master records. Warning. Yes, I'm absolutely sure. All right, that was fast. Right click update.esm and select undelete and disable references because that's not confusing. Done. Undeleting and disabling references done. Less than a second. Close TS5 edit and when prompted, check the box to create a backup. Make sure the file you just cleaned is checked and then hit save. Checked, save changes, backup plugins, okay. 
The clean master will now be in your overwrite folder along with a folder called TS5 edit backups contain the original unclean version. Mm. Is this true Skyrim? All right, there it is. It is. Uh, sure. <laughs> Date created 3 29 2016. Yep, that is today. It's interesting that date modified is two years ago, and date created is today, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> there's the cleaned one. Here's our backup, just as foretold. Good. All right, go back to MO again and drag the TAS5 edit backups folder out of overwrite and into the new TAS5 edits backup mod you created in step two. <sighs> okay. Open MO again and drag the TS5 edit backups folder out of overwrite. Locate at the bottom of the mods. Okay, here it is. And into the new TS5 edit backups mod you created in step two. Uh, is that in here? Okay. <laughs> All right. <sighs> okay. So that was out of mod organizer and into my file manager. Ah, that's what was not allowing me. Okay, come back. Come back. I didn't mean to scare you guys. Sorry, folders. Okay, so we got that out. Right click the overwrite folder and select create mod, name it update clean. Activate the mod and move the plugin file in the correct place in the load order. I believe. Bash patch should go last, if I remember my instructions correctly. You can also just move the files from the overwrite folder into the Skyrim slash data folder, but if you do that, then if you ever verify local files in Steam, you'll need to reclean the files. We don't want to do that. Um, can I remove that? Whoops. Hmm. Okay, repeat steps three to 10 for Dawnguard, Hearthfires, and Dragonborn. Once you've cleaned the update and DLCs, activate them all in the left pane of Mod Organizer. Okay, side note, the overwrite is where MO puts files when it doesn't know what to do with them so that the user can decide for themselves what should be done. Best practice is to keep the overwrite clean, so if a mod ever drops a file in the overwrite, it's a good idea to figure out which mod the file comes from and then drag the file folder to the associated mod and drop it in. All right, Dawnguard, Hearthfires, and Dragonborn. Okay. TS5 edit.
Dawn Guard. Remember, there are three things to be done besides picking only Dawn Guard. Then we apply filter for cleaning, remove identical to masters, undelete and disable references. Apply filter for cleaning. Wait for it to finish up here or down here. Remove identical to masters. Undelete and disable references. Well, it has some errors, but what can you do? Create a backup. Go back into MO, overwrite. Is that the correct place? Yeah. Okay, so I accidentally killed my backup of um, update, but that's not so bad. Now everything is list here. This is create mod. Don guard clean. All right, next. is run hearth fires because we just did dawn guard we're going to do them in the order seen here okay it's finished apply filter for cleaning it's done Remove identical to master. Okay, it's done. And whoa, 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 go away. Then we want to undelete and disable references. Some things couldn't be done. That's fine. Close, tell it to back up, make sure it's checked. Check overwrite, drop that in there. Yes, so it's gonna drop it in the same thing. Close this, create mods. Activate move and lastly dragonborn dot esm so run tse dragonborn is the only thing selected wait for it to finish It's finished. Apply filter for cleaning. All right, that's done. Remove identical to master. Mm, 
Okay, that's done. Undelete and disable references. Okay, um, done, one warning, fine. Exit, make your backup. Retrieve the backup and drop it into the folder we created earlier, mods. Close this, create mod, dragonborn clean. Activate it, move it to the correct position. To the correct place in the load order, maybe we should match this. Yeah, okay. Dungard, Hearthfires, Dragonborn. Move all these up here. Texture pack. I'm just gonna organize this to match the plugins, I guess. Or maybe it does it automatically. Er, cancel that. <laughs> Let's not get off. Oh, let's wait for it. Ah, oh, what have we done? Oh, well, let's leave that. Okay, so we finished all that. Create a merged patch. Again, we have no mods right now. This won't really do anything, but the more your mod list grows, the more important it becomes to have a merged patch and learn to edit it by hand. Yay. Okay, this got over whatever I told it to do. Launch TS5 edit. Make sure all your mods are selected. When all the mods are done loading, right click any mod and select other. Okay. So we're gonna give it some time. I'm going to watch down here for it to finish. All right, finished. Right click any mod and select other create merged patch. Oh, other mm -hmm, mm -hmm. create merged patch. Click OK when the warning pops up and then name it TES5 Merged. Okay, it is creating it. Once the merged patch is created, you can, if you wish, double click it to drop open its contents. Here you can adjust things by hand. This takes some practice, but it's a great way to learn what mods are doing internally and being able to create your own patches to fix conflicts. I will eventually be making a video to accompany this section and go over some simple editing. Note that at this point, with no other mods installed, your merged patch will, contain, will not contain anything. It re resolves conflicts in mods. No mods equals no conflicts. Thanks. I do not believe it is done yet. Where it would probably tell me. Although it is empty as indicated. When you are satisfied with your TS5 merge.esp, close TS5 edit and save only the TES5 merge.esp don't save changes to any other mods. Well, it seems responsive. Let's assume it's done. All right, save that.
Go to MO. Another backups folder. Throw it in there. We'll make overwrite into a mod and we'll call it merged patch. Okay, we'll go ahead and activate it and move it there above bashed. All right. You made it over the first mountain on your journey towards a modded Skyrim. Take a minute to revel in the glory. Drink some mead. I have a beer downstairs in the fridge. Punch Nazim. Shout a mud crab off a cliff. Dance a jig in the name of Uncle Shio. Once you're done celebrating, let's go over a few good practices and install a few mods to get you started. Pretty sure you guys have had enough of me. I've had enough. Um, I'm going to end this video right here. And I'm going to go ahead and immediately start on installing the unofficial patches. And I'll just make a video for that that will be attached. But this one has gone on way too long already. So um, I, if this helps you in any way, uh, I'm glad. I'm sorry it's so long. I actually had never done all of these steps together before uh, from this particular set of instructions. I found it fairly easy. Uh, I haven't run Skyrim to see if it does anything because I haven't actually changed much. But um, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I hope it helps you. And come back to my channel if you would like to see anything else. Until then, please like the video and subscribe. Later, my friends.